In this Market Muse video, you'll learn what a topic model is, the different ways of creating topic models, what makes a topic model good or not, and the uses and limitations of topic models as an aid to creating content. Hello, I'm Steven Jeske from Market Muse. You may be asking yourself, what is a topic model and why should I even care? In the simplest terms, topic modeling discovers abstract topics that occur in a collection of documents, also known as a corpus. The way this is done is through a probabilistic or statistical model. This text mining process helps discover the hidden semantic structures or meanings in a body of text. Now, that last sentence was a mouthful, so I'm going to give you an example that should make things clear. Let's say we're reviewing an article about taking care of a cat. Now, some of the words or the topics we'll probably find in that document include litter box, cat's claw, cat's teeth, indoor cat, outdoor cat, kitty litter, veterinarian, cat toys, you get the picture. Now, some of those concepts will be more closely related than others to the subject taking care of a cat. And because we're dealing with computer algorithms, all of this gets expressed mathematically. Of course, there are many different ways to do this. One popular method is called Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency, or TFIDF. By the way, it dates back to 1957, which is way before the Internet. Now, there are two parts to TFIDF. Term Frequency counts the number of times a term appears in a document, while IDF measures how common a word is across all documents. And together, they work to filter out common terms, leaving behind the rest. While still useful for text pre-processing, when it comes to topic modeling, let's just say we've made a lot of advancements over the last 50 years. Now, another approach you may have heard of is called latent semantic analysis or latent semantic indexing. Like TFIDF, it's not new and it's not cutting edge. The patent for LSI was filed in 1988, back when personal computers still used floppy drives. Because LSI was created before the rise of the internet, it was really designed to work with small static databases. And the problem with LSI is that every time you add a document to that database, the entire collection needs to be re-indexed. And that makes it unsuitable for the internet, where new content is continually being added. Oh, and one last thing, LSI keywords don't exist. It's just a term SEOs made up to make themselves look smart. So what makes a great topic model? There are a few things. First, the model should be based on an analysis of a large set of documents. Ideally, we're talking hundreds or even thousands of pages so that we can fully capture all the knowledge on the subject. After all, you don't really believe that the sum of all knowledge about a subject can be found in the top 10 or 20 results in Google, do you? Second, it should return a list of topics semantically related to the main subject. Keep in mind that frequency isn't the determinator. You can have a topic that is mentioned infrequently that is still closely related. Third, that list of topics should be presented in order of relevance so you know which ones are the most important. And fourth, the model should be information rich. Now, for that one, we're going to have to sidestep for a minute to talk about n-grams. An n-gram denotes how many words make up a topic. You can have unigrams, which is one word, bigrams, which are two words, trigrams, which are three words, and so on. Going back to the subject taking care of a cat, here's a partial output from MarketMuse using our own patented topic modeling technology that analyzes thousands of documents to create its topic models. In this case, you'll notice that nearly all the related topics are bigrams. They're composed of two words. Depending on the subject, we can even surface related topics that are trigrams, composed of three words and higher. Now, look at this example from a free TFIDF tool for the same subject. It only shows one-word topics, unigrams, and many in the model simply aren't helpful, such as new, help, keep, get, make, need, tips, and so on. It's an example of what we call poor data fidelity. Topic models are a great shorthand that reveals the most important topics to address when covering a subject. It's nice and concise. But the challenge for writers is turning that data into a compelling narrative, which we cover in the next module.